Hey guys, welcome to the Jamstack video series. A video series where I will teach you how to create this static blogging site using Jamstack. In the previous video, we have set up our coding environment with Next.js and Material UI. In case if you haven't seen the video, I will put the link on the description and cards. Please check that out first. In this video, we are going to build the whole front end of this application. And you might have noticed that it is a pretty long video. So thank you for clicking on the video. I will also put the timestamp of the video so that you can jump to any of the section. It took a lot of effort to create and edit this video. So hit the like and subscribe button and start the coding. So first of all, I'm going to create this app bar and this app bar has an app title and a navigation item and this app title and the navigation item are also link which will redirect user to another page and this link is not an ordinary anchor tag this is Next.js link component so I'm just going to create another component that will work with both Next.js link component and any kind of material UI component so on my text editor at the source directory I'm going to create another directory which will be called components and this is where I will store all of my components and inside the components directory I'm going to create another directory for links and I like to keep the components categorized instead of just inserting some files and this way is really easy to find any kind of component. So I'm just going to create a file MUI link dot JSX. Now I'm just going to paste the code. Okay, so this is the code that we need and you don't have to understand it. I didn't even wrote it. I just copy paste the code from this repository, this is a Material UI Next.js example repository. I just copy pasted the code and customized a little bit, added some styling to it. You can just copy paste from my repository. The link will be on the description. Now what it will basically do is it will wrap up the whole Material UI component by a Next.js link component. Okay, so let's just save the file and quit. Now let's create the app bar. Now inside the components directory, I'm going to create another directory. I will call it app bar. And I'm going to create a file app bar .jsx. Now I'm just going to create a boilerplate react component with a snippet extension. So R A F C E. And I will put the extension link on the description we need to import some components so I'm just going to paste the import statement I don't want to bother you by typing those so these are the components that we need from material UI we have an app bar toolbar typography button and box I will delete the dips and create an app bar now this app bar is just a container. We need to insert a toolbar. So toolbar. Uh, so let's just test it out. I'm going to insert this component inside our app.js file. So let's open that up. App.js. Okay. Now let me clear you some concept of app.js. Every component that you export from the files of pages directory is rendered to the web page, right? Those components are passed as props at this component in this file, the app.js file, okay? This component props that you are seeing is really that component. So basically this component is kind of like our entry point, it's everywhere. So you can say that this my app component is rendered to every single page and the component that you export from the file is just a children of my app component. 
So this component is on every page. I hope this is clear for you. Okay, so I'm just going to import the app bar. So import app bar from, I will go one step back, then components, then app bar, then app bar. Don't need the extension. And I will create a React fragment here. And React fragment is just an empty tag because we need to surround return a single component from a function, okay? Insert the app bar. And just save the file and let's see what we have. And Prettier has just formatted the code for me. All right, I have an error that app bar has already been declared. Okay, it's my fault. So in the app bar file, I need to, I just need to rename the function. I'm going to call it MUI app bar also here. So let's save it again. All right, we have this app bar, at least a container with a background color. And this app bar by default is, is positioned fixed. We are going to fix it later. The app bar component is just a container and the toolbar is the component that has that background color, okay? It is also a flexbox container. So let's fix the position first. Just give a position prop to static. And let's see. Now the app bar is static, but we have also some browser default style. We need to remove it, but I'm going to do it later. So let's create the app title in the toolbar. So I'm going to import the MUI link component. Let's import MUI link from dot dot slash links MUI link. I'm also going to wrap up the app title by the box component, okay? So box, then insert MUI link component. And inside the component, I'm going to call it kills blog. And also you need to pass some props to the MUI link component unless you don't want any error. So first prop it will take so first MUI component and you need to pass a component here. So I'm going to pass typography, then href, it will take a redirect link as string. It should redirect to root route. So this is our app title. And also, yes, uh, I need to give a variant of H6. So this is our app title. Now I'm going to create some navigation items. So again, MUI link and it will take button as MUI component. Button, the href will be slash search, then the item name it will be search. Now you can put more items, but that's enough for me. So let's just save the file. Okay, so this is what we have. We have a app title, which is a link, and also a search item, which is a button. And as I've told you earlier, the toolbar is just a flexbox container. So it pushes all the items to the left by default. Now I want the app title to take the whole remaining space and push the navigation item to the right. So I'm going to put some inline styling to the box container for the app title. So style. Then I want to give flex grow to one. 
and now this box container should take the whole remaining space and push the navigation item to the right so save the file okay so this is what we have the navigation item has been pushed to the right and this app title is taking the whole space okay so this is for our app bar okay so our app bar is done let's reset the browser default style just go to the app.js file again now in here I'm going to import a component from material UI which is CSS baseline and I will insert it above the app bar so CSS baseline and now it should reset our browser default style so as you can see that it has reset our browser style okay so let's create these block cards so inside the components folder I'm going to create another folder which is blog and inside the blog I'm going to create a file which is blog preview .jsx. so again RAFCE for boilerplate component and I need to import some component from material UI so I'm going to paste them so we're going to need an image component from Next.js image we're going to need a card card header card media card content and normal typography okay let's remove this so let's insert card it will have card header for the header part let me just show it to you so we have the header part right the title and the subheader so card header it will be a self-closing component or tag whatever you say it will take a title prop and a subheader prop so first title now title will take a react node not a react component okay a react component is just a function a react node is just the return value of that function okay so we are going to pass a react node in the title prop I'm going to need the MUI link component because the title is also a link so let's import that import MUI link from dot dot slash links then MUI link so MUI link and I'm just going to pass some false data in the component right now later we're going to fill up them with props so title could be like um, why I love react Jess. now pass the MUI component I will pass typography then href will be a false link doesn't really matter now we are going to fill it with props later then I want a variant to have h6 and I'm also going to need a subheader prop for my card header not the MUI link so subheader it will also take our react node I'm going to pass a react fragment and the subheader will have a creation date how many times it has been viewed and how much time it will take to read I'm going to pass some gibberish here let's just save the file and insert it on our index.js file so open up the index.js file index.js okay uh, let's import that component so import blog preview from dot dot slash components then blog then blog preview I'm going to delete this typography pass some fragments so 
so let's insert blog preview and let's see what we have no need of this all right so this is what we have this is our card you can see the box shadow here so this is the card title and this is the card subheader okay you can see that it has taken full width but we are going to shrink it with layout now i'm going to add the image of the preview this image after card header i'm going to insert card media and inside the card media insert next.js image component we have imported at the top okay this one so let's insert it so image and it will take some props first the source which will be a string and I will give the value in a minute then it can be empty okay you have to give it then you have to give the height then you have to give the width and the height and width will be number and you have to give layout now first of all I want the image to be responsive okay so when the screen size will shrink the image should also shrink but I also want the image to have the aspect ratio while the screen size is shrinking it is very easy to do that with Next.js image component. You have to just give responsive. And you have to give the height and the width based on the aspect ratio you want. So if you want to have aspect ratio of 16 is to 9, then you have to give 1920 into 1080. Those have 16 is to 9 aspect ratio. So I'm going to give the height 1080 and the height will be 920. The height and width doesn't really matter as long as it has the correct aspect ratio, okay? And for the image source, you have to have the image inside the public directory that Next.js have. Okay, so if I show it to you, this is the public folder and you have to put all of your assets like images, SVGs, videos to use it with Next.js image component. So inside the image source, you have to use absolute value. You don't have to go dot dot slash dot dot slash and then go to the public folder, okay? You don't have to do that. You, you just have to think of it like an absolute path. So that's why you have to give a forward slash and now you have to add the path of your image. Now I'm just going to add a sample image inside the public folder. Okay, so we have a sample image. So what I'm going to do is add it inside the source. So just because it's in the public folder, not any subdirectories, that's why I can do just slash sample.jpg. So let's save the file and see what we have. Okay. So this is the image I have, as you can see. So if I inspect it and shrink the width, if I shrink the screen width, the image width also shrinks, but it keeps the aspect ratio of that image. You know, it doesn't look good because the original resolution of that image is pretty high. That's why it doesn't look good. That's why you have to use an object fit prop inside the image component. So object fit, then cover. So save the file. Okay, now it looks good. Even if I shrink it, it is maintaining the aspect ratio. So now that we have our card media, now let's add the card content. So card content. Now inside the card content, you have to put the text that you want. So I'm just going to give some lorem ipsum text.
Okay, so save the file. So if I scroll down, it, you can see the card contents are here. Now it doesn't look good because I have to shrink the card size. I want to make this image a link, a link to the blog itself. So instead of regular card media, I'm going to use MUI link. So MUI link and the component will be the card media. href will be again it doesn't matter and also change it to MUI link so save the file so as you can see the cursor has been changed that means our image is now a link okay I can click on it it will take me to the root route because I have specified it as so so let's create the blog layout so if you are using material UI like me, then you have to understand the grid system that material UI has to create this layout. And if you don't know about it, I have a video on my channel. I will put that link on the description. Please watch that. So in material UI grid system, we have something called a container, which you can think of it's like a parent and a grid item or children. You can say so a grid container is a grid container has 12 parts or you can say 12 grids you can specify each of the grid item that how much space or how much grid it should take based on the breakpoints material UI has five breakpoints XS SM MD LG and Excel okay you have to specify the grid space based on the breakpoint to get this kind of layout now I don't want to make this website uh, responsive I don't want to waste your time I want on every single row to have three cards or three block previews okay so it doesn't really matter what is the screen size is I always want three columns in a single row so let's create that inside the components folder I'm going to create another folder which is layout actually layouts Then I'm going to create a file which will be blog preview layout .jsx. Again RFCE. So I'm just going to need two things to import. First is the grid. So import grid from material UI code slash grid. Okay. Let's delete this. So insert grid. I want this to be a grid container so pass the container prop and inside the container I will have a grid item so grid again and it will be an item now inside the item you have to put your children's so I'm just going to import the block preview component. Import um, blog preview from dot dot slash blog slash block preview. Okay, so inside the grid item, I'm going to insert that. Okay, so just save the file, add it to our index.js file. So index.js, I don't need to import block preview. So import block preview layout from dot dot slash components, then layouts, block preview layout. And um, change it to blog preview layout so let's test it out as you can see that it has everything same because it is taking the full width and I haven't really specified the actual grid space based on the breakpoint so I want to use excess breakpoint 
which starts from zero and ends with 599 pixels. So what I want is from zero pixels to infinity, I want it to take three grid space out of 12. So that's why I need to use excess, which will give me the range from zero to infinity. So excess, I want it to have uh, three, don't need this. So save the file. Item has taken only three grid space and rest of the space is now empty. Okay, so I want to make some copies of the same card. So instead of only one grid item, I want to create an array of items. So array, I want to have 20 item, fill this with zero and map it over map then function and return the grid item from the map function okay so save the file that's weird that should not have a four items in a row oh actually i have to give access value four because i want to take the four grid space i don't know why i did suck at math so as you can see that each of the item has taken four grid space of its container and the container has only three grid item in a row. So that's what we want, but it doesn't look good. There should be some space between the cards. So you can add that too. So in the container, you need to give a spacing prop. And it has to be a number zero to 10. The default value is zero maybe. So I want it to have five space. So as you can see that it has some spacing now, but I think the spacing is too much. Let's decrease to four. Okay, now it looks better than before. All right, so we have our block preview cards and the whole layout. So let's make the search page. Okay, so now we know that you can create a route inside the pages directory, but what about a nested route? For example, block slash react slash something, okay? To do that, you need to create subdirectories inside the pages directory. In this case, I want to make a search route. So let's create a directory. I call it search. Now in the search, I'm gonna create a index.js file. So index.js. Now this index.js file will serve slash search route. It will be same as creating a search.js file inside the pages directory. Why I did that? Why I created a directory if it was same? Because I want to create a dynamic routing where I will come in a minute. So open that up. So again, RAFCE for component. Let's change it to search. I need to import two things. One is the grid component and another one is the typography component. I will paste them. So again, no need of this div. So first of all, I want a grid container, grid. And I want it to be a grid container. So container. And inside the container, I only need two grid items. So grid. Now item, I will copy it again. The first item, I want it to have excess of 12. And the second item, I want it to have excess of 10. Now the first grid item will be our typography component. It will say search block, this one. Inside that, I want typography. Search blocks. I want variant of H2. And color would be secondary. I also align it to center. 
So save the file to format this. Okay, it's not formatting. Something is wrong. Let's wrap it with a uh, parenthesis. Okay, the last one is not a closing tag. Okay, now it should work. Okay, now it is working. The next item will contain the input box. So we need to create it. But before I create it, I want all of the children to stay at the center horizontally of its container. Both of these components are at the center. To do that, I'm going to add a property, justify to center. So let's save it and see how it looks. So this is how it looks now. Let's add the search box like this one. Um, inside the components, I'm going to create another directory. It will be search box and inside the search box, there will be a folder which is search box.jsx. Now I'm going to replace the div with form. So form. And now I'm going to import text field component and a button component from material UI. So text field. It will be a self cost component. I want a level. So level. The level will be search block. I also want a placeholder. And the placeholder and the level will be same. So let me just store it in a variable. So const label search block so label equals to label and placeholder will also be label i want the text field to take the full width of its container so full width prop i want margin to be normal I also need to give a value which should be stored in a state so let's create one I will import use state from react so use state let's create a state so use state I want the initial value to be empty string so let's destructure the return value const actually not constant const um, I will call it query text and it will be set query text so the value will be query text I also need a on change handler. So on change. So our callback function. So and it will take the event parameter. So I just want to set the query text to event.target.value. So whenever I type on the text field, it will set the state to the to the current value of the text field. Now I want to create a button now. So button and the button value will be search. I need to give some props. Its type will be submit. I want the color to be secondary. I want the variant to be contained. I want the button to be disabled if the query text value is an empty string. That means the user haven't typed anything. So they should not be though so they can't search anything, okay? So disabled. So I will check for if the query text is false. If the query text is false, then the disable will be true. So the bank sign then 
query text. I always want to check for the opposite, okay? I hope this makes sense to you. So, um, let's just save the file and see what we have. But I actually need to import this on the search page. So, let's open that up. So, let's import that. Import search box dot dot slash dot dot again then components then search box and search box so let's insert that inside the second grid item search box so let's see now we can type anything here but this doesn't have any functionality so now what I want is when I will click this button it will redirect me to a dynamic page so let's understand the dynamic routing. So if you go to linkedin.com slash accessibility, you will see this page. It doesn't really matter who visit this page. It will be same to all. It won't gonna change. And the routes will also not going to change. This is what we call a static route where all the pages are predefined. It is pre-built. In contrast, if you go to linkedin.com slash in slash any username for example my username that on john you will see my profile if you type another username then it will show you that user profile so you can say that it is not staying the same as the previous one so it is changing this is what we call a dynamic route and that's what dynamic means so whatever username you put and it will show you that user's page. So after the slash in part, you can say this is just a placeholder. And this placeholder is often called as query parameter or a slug and so on. If you want to learn more, you can visit Next.js documentation. They have a pretty good documentation. It will make sense more. So now what I want is when I will search for anything, I should be redirect to slash search slash whatever text the user has put it inside the search box so if the user has put like apple then the user should be redirect to slash search slash apple okay if the user search for apple then space banana then the user should redirect to slash search slash whatever he inserted if the search value has a space in it it should be converted into a plus sign so in here apple then space then banana so the placeholder should be like apple plus banana so the user should redirect to apple plus banana okay makes sense so now i'm going to create a on submit handler for the form so on submit it will take a function i will call it handle submit so let's create it const handle submit it will take event parameter now first of all I want to prevent the default behavior which is the refresh I don't want to refresh the page so event dot prevent default okay so this will stop the page refreshing now I want to convert the query text into a query string I mean I will replace all the spacing in the query text with a plus sign okay so I will create a variable const converted query string So query text dot trim. It will remove extra spaces before and after the string. Now I want to call the replace. Now dot replace. It will take a regular expression. I'm just going to paste it here. Now this will convert all the empty spaces to a plus sign and will return us a string. So let's create a redirect path. So const 
redirect path I want to use a template string so first slash search then the converted query string value so converted query string now I need to use the user router hook from Next.js so import it will be a named import so use router from router sorry next slash router so I'm going to call it use router it will return as a router object which has a push method that is used for redirection so const then destructure it push okay so on handle submit I want to push the URL to this redirect path so push and redirect path okay so let's save the file so let's create another file inside the search folder for dynamic routing now to create a dynamic route you need to wrap your file name with square brackets so give a square bracket then give your file extension name JSX and inside the square brackets you need to give a name to your placeholder I will call it query so hit enter so again RAFCE and remove the square brackets I don't need divs let's import a typography component so import typography from material UI code slash typography I'm going to create a header so typography but before that uh, let's wrap it with a react fragment okay so now typography I want a header to be like you have X search results based on the query okay I will replace the X and the query with real data later okay so I'm going to give some props to typography color I want secondary I want a variant to be h2 and a component to be h1 so let's save the file and let's test it out okay so I'm going to type eslint setup eslint setup so let's click on it all right I have been redirected to the slash search slash eslint plus setup and the text you have x search results based on the query so this is what we call our dynamic routing so if I just replace the ESLint setup and type something like react plus JavaScript and it will show you the same page because we haven't put it any kind of search feature so it will show you the same page so let's use the blog layout again like this this is the same layout that we have used on the home page okay so let's import blog preview layout from dot dot slash dot dot slash components then layouts blog preview layout okay so insert it again blog preview layout so let's save the file and we are almost done so as you can see that we have our blog previews too so we are done with the search route so let's create the actual blog route like this one okay so let's create it now this will also be a dynamic route so as you can see it has blog slash 
the blog slug. Let's create it. So inside the pages, I'm going to create a folder. It will be a blog. Now inside the blog, I will create a file. It will be slash blog or sorry slug dot jsx. So rafce. It will be um, blog. Again, I don't need this div. I will just put something like h1. Um, this is a blog page. This is just for testing. If it works, I will create a separate component for the layout. So if I go slash blog slash anything. Okay, so it is working. This is a blog page. Let's create the blog layout. So inside the components, inside the layouts, create a file blog layout.jsx. So RAFCE. So I'm just going to import some components. It is a it is the grid component typography and the Next.js image and Mextas is just a function for creating custom styling with CSS in JS. I will wrap the whole layout with a grid container, grid container and I want to make all of the children stay at the center horizontally. So justify center. I'm going to create a grid item, grid and item prop. I want it to take 11 grid space for access. So access 11. Okay, so the grid item will be at the center and it will take 11 grid space. Actually 11 would be too much. Let's make it to 8. Okay, so inside the grid item, I'm going to put all of the children's. So as you can see that uh, the first children should be the blog banner. So let's insert the next year's image. So image, I want to use the same sample image like I've did before. So source uh, slash sample dot jpeg. I want layout to be responsive height will be again the height width doesn't really matter as long as have the correct aspect ratio then 80 and the width will be 1920 and object fit to cover let's save the file to format this and secondly we will have a title so let's add that typo graphy and the app title I will just paste it here it doesn't really matter here I will give the variant of h3 the component will be h1 I also want to align it to center okay so let's save the file and see what we have but before that let's add it to the slug page so I will import blog layout from dot dot slash dot dot slash components uh, layouts blog layout I don't need this so blog layout so save the file okay so we have the blog banner we have the blog title 
let's add some custom styling because they need some padding so i will wrap the image with a div let's add some custom styling to it that's why i have imported make styles in case if you don't know about make styles you can watch a video on my channel i will put the link in the description make styles is just a function so call it and it will take a f object with styling as a parameter now inside the object you have to specify first class names so i will call it banner style I want some margin I want 3 ram to the top and bottom and 0 to left and right then I want to have a padding bottom style so I'm going to create a class padding bottom which will have a padding bottom style of 1 ram and the make styles function returns us a hook Let's store it, use styles, and let's call the use styles hook. And the use styles will return us an object with class names. So const, I will destructure them, banner style, and padding bottom. So let's add it to the image wrapper class name um, banner style and um, also to the typography class name padding bottom. So save the file. This is looking much better than before now let's create these things the creation date the reading time and how many times it has been viewed so after the typography i'm going to create a grid container so grid uh, container it will have three grid items and all of them will have a typography children so grid and inside them I need a typography now inside the typography first I want the creation date so creation date and obviously I'm going to replace them with real data I want a variant of h6 and obviously the grid has to be item so copy it two more times so the second item will be x min read and the third one will be x views I also want it to have the padding bottom class class name padding bottom and I want to justify them space evenly okay so save the file and after that I want the block content but we don't have any block content so I will put some lorem ipsum lorem 300 okay so we have 300 word dummy text so now let's save the file and test it out okay so as you can see it is working and I guess we are done with building the front end even though we need to create more components when we will have our markdown contents so that's it for this video in the next video we are going to create markdown files with real contents and real images 
we are going to create a MongoDB database. We are going to also upload our markdown content to our MongoDB database. Okay, so if you like the video series, please like, share and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the future videos. Okay, so until then, stay safe. Goodbye.